In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Light of Christ The Son of God coming in to a dark world. The wisdom and the word of God. Illuminating our world. Illuminating others and ourselves. And from this light, we now go to two more candles to represent the dual nature of Christ. Christ, who is completely God, the very image of God, illuminating God to us. The one through whom all things are created and all things sustained. The one through him, through whom light itself is created. But he chose to give up his divine status and become fully human, fully man so that he might identify with us. Christ entered our world so that we can enter his. He became like us 
so that we can become more like him. And now we take the light to three more candles representing the Trinity, the triune nature of God. And through his willingness to become human, Jesus takes our humanness right into the heart of the Trinity itself. Where we can be drawn in by the Holy Spirit in our lives, enlightened by the Holy Spirit as we live with the power and equipping of the Holy Spirit to bring light to the world. And we are united in the Trinity with our Heavenly Father. The one who through Christ created light. The one who sustains and blesses his creation. The Father who was willing to give his Son that he loves to the world that he loves. We return to the light of Christ. We look to the light to bring light to our lives so that we may too bring light to the world as we in ourselves carry his light wherever we go. And now I invite you in your homes to imagine that you are coming and picking up that light for yourselves from the light of Christ. And you take it and you go and light another candle.
of the world you stepped down into darkness opened my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here i am to here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Of all days, or oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. Here I stand to worship, take the knee to bow down, raise my voice to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. I'll never know how much upon the cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon the cross. Here I stand to worship, take the knee to bow down, raise my voice to say The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. And now we are going to join together as though we are with the very early church in an early hymn called Fos Hilarum. It's one of the oldest hymns ever recorded. And one can imagine spending the evening with the early church in darkness singing or saying this song together. So now we join together and say, O oh, joyful light, from the pure glory of the eternal heavenly Father, O oh, holy blessed Jesus Christ, as we come to the setting of the sun and see the evening light, we give thanks and praise to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit of God. Worthy are you at all times to be sung with holy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, 
to be glorified through, through all creation. The Electrician by Jill Austen. The room was cold, dark and damp, but it had become my friend, for I had lived there ever since I could remember. Heavy blankets of isolation, loneliness and fear insulated and protected me from the outside world. One day, there was a knock on the door. My heart froze, yet everything in me told me that he had come. The darkness swallowed my muffled cries. Once again, he knocked. Oh, Lord, Lord, come in. The door opened, and there stood the electrician. He wore radiant white overalls and hat, and around his waist was a large leather workman's belt with various tools, wires and light bulbs of different sizes dangling from it. He tipped his hat and with a softness in his eyes came in with a large white ladder and put it in the middle of the dark room. He then proceeded to climb up the ladder and insert a small 25 watt light bulb into the bare socket hanging from the ceiling. He came down, folded up the ladder and left. I crawled into the middle of the soft warm light and fell asleep. The healing light began to restore and strengthen me. Hours later I woke and began to walk around the circumference of the light. And then I noticed a shovel lying in the middle of some debris. So I went over and picked it up and began to clean the area. It was a tremendous amount of work and took days, but finally it was clean. And then, as the days followed, I would find myself lying on my back just staring at the bare light bulb dangling from the ceiling and loving the light. It had become my friend and comforted me. Then, one day, there was a knock once again at my door and I knew it was him. I ran to open the door. Once again, it was the electrician. He smiled at me as he came in. I could tell that he was pleased with what he saw. He brought in his ladder and put it in the middle of the room, climbed up, took out the light bulb and put in a larger 100 watt bulb. Instantly the light in the room increased and for the first time I noticed a chair and a couch. I quickly began to explore my newfound space as the electrician folded up his ladder and left. I loved the light. I loved everything about the room until I noticed the piles of rubbish and dirt which had been hidden everywhere. And then, as I cast my gaze around the room, I saw a greasy film over everything and piles of old books, records and souvenirs scattered everywhere. I had had such an insatiable appetite for things, and more and more things, but they had never satisfied me. But now, the light from the electrician filled the void. I knew that all this clutter had to go, so I rolled up my sleeves, and over the next few months, began to shovel, sweep, and polish. Finally, for the first time in my life, I felt that I had a home that was mine. How strange it was, because I had looked everything, everywhere for that. And to have had it all along amazed me. But then, I had never had the right before.
Some were shocked at the state of the house and left. But a few stayed, grabbed brooms, shovels and mops, and began to help clean up the debris. It was hard to believe that they understood, and they accepted and loved me just as I was. The electrician came over and embraced me, saying, my child, the ones that are helping live in homes that have even greater light than you do. They had others to help them clean their homes and still do. That is part of the healing process. Some things that have to be cleared out are too heavy for one person. I always meant for you to help heal and restore one another. As I looked around, I noticed that around everyone's waist was a workman's belt with wires and light bulbs dangling from it. As they helped to restore the room, they put light bulbs into the mended lamps, and the light grew and grew. The electrician then said to me, Dear one, there are still many rooms in your house where I want to bring my light. Would you let me? Yes, Lord. And my heart melted in surrender. Then he fastened a workman's belt around my waist and said, You will also help to bring my light to others' lives and hearts. You together are my children of the light. As the words of Jesus are recorded in Matthew, chapter 5. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. We now invite you to take your light into some dark places. We will lead a short reflection and we hope that you will join us by bringing your own thoughts and reflections and then lighting a candle to leave them in the dark places. And now we come to our time of bringing the light of Christ into dark areas. We can't be together this year, but I hope that you will join in by lighting some of your candles to represent bringing the light of Christ to different areas. There are four stations I'm going to lead a very short reflection on the first two and then there'll be time to reflect in between and then I'll lead a reflection on the last two. Belonging and relationships. Where do you want the light of Christ to come in? Are there shadows of emptiness that you want Jesus to fill with the warmth of his light. In a moment, when you light your first candle and gaze on it, why not bring any desires that you have to God? For the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Our second station is about forgiveness. As you reflect on the word forgiveness, what comes to mind for you? Perhaps you are aware of needing God's forgiveness. Why not ask him and receive it into your heart? Is there someone that you need to release forgiveness to? Why not do that? And so when you light your second candle 
and gaze at the flickering light. Bring any person or memory before God that comes to mind. For out of his fullness, we have all received grace. And now I'm going to light my two candles to reflect on those two stations. And I invite you to do the same. Our third station is the impact of COVID-19 on your lives this year. Let's bring this year to God, all that it has contained, the losses, the sadness, everything that couldn't happen, that we were expecting to happen the persistent need for vigilance and self-discipline, the sense of tension and anxiety, and the sheer boredom of it all. As you light your candle in a moment, why not simply tell God what has been the hardest for you, and then release it into his loving presence. For in him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. Our final station is personal value and worth. Now we have an opportunity to bring to God us, Simply us. I wonder how you see yourself. I wonder if you know how much God values you, how deeply he treasures you. As you light your final candle in a moment, why not ask him to reveal something to you Something about you that he treasures. Ask him for reassurance and release to him any sense of unworthiness or shame. For to all who received him, 
to all who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And now we have a short reading from John's Gospel. Jesus replied, My light will shine on you for just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of the light. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you Wherever he may send you May he guide you through the wilderness Protect you through the storm May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you. Wherever he may send you, may he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you a home of joy, sing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you a home of joy, sing once again into our door.
And now we read from Colossians, chapter 1, verses 11 to 14. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so that you will have the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a home in the kingdom of light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. May we shine as light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen.